So a gray wolf is the closest living relative of a dire wolf. They're genetically really similar. And phenotypically, their, their morphology is also similar, only dire wolves are larger, more muscular, and have these light colored coats and other, other things that we can see from the fossils. And so we targeted DNA sequence variants that we believe lead to those traits. And then we edited gray wolf cells to contain those dire wolf DNA variants. And then we cloned those cells and created our direwolves. What they've done is use genetic engineering to make a gray wolf superficially, superficially resemble a direwolf, or at least what we think direwolves might have looked like, because we're not really sure what that is either. And those slight modifications seem to have been derived from retrieved direwolf material. Does that make it a dire wolf? No. Does it make a slightly modified gray wolf? Yes. You take an egg cell that is ripe, ready to be fertilized, but we're not fertilizing them. Instead, we're taking those ripe egg cells and we're taking out the genetic material that would have come from mom and we're putting in a whole cell that has mom's and dad's genetic material. That's our edited cell. As they develop, they start showing you hunting instincts and stalking instincts. Um, what they'll probably never learn is Right. What is the finishing move of how you kill a giant elk or a, a you know, big deer, something like that? Um, those are sort of those finely tuned social learning opportunities that these guys won't have. We're talking about tens of millions of years between deposition of the individual and finding the fossil. So the, 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 the DNA degradation would mean that if you could get a few base pairs out, you're doing well. And that would, you can, that's not enough to create an entire genome.